Tomorrow, January 19th, marks one year since the deadly shooting inside the West Side Walmart in Evansville. A former employee walked into the superstore and shot an employee. What ensued was an intense manhunt with multiple shootouts between the suspect and law enforcement inside the confines of Walmart. Tonight, in a 14 News exclusive special report, my intent and that of photojournalist Brian Sissel is not so much to relieve, relive the horror as to focus on the relationship between two EPD officers. They had never been in an active shooter situation, yet they dodged bullets to save lives. With the US uh, Xbox 360 Lieutenant control. Jason Thomas is the Evansville Police Department's Special Operations Commander. And I, I customized a lot of it. He builds robots in his spare time. He is built exactly to scale. Uh, he's, uh, so this is what R2-D2 looked like in the movies. And Sergeant Crystal Thomas oversees second shift motor patrol and volunteers with the cops connecting with kids Disney adventure. In almost 50 years of combined police work, neither Jason nor Crystal had ever encountered an active shooter. Evansville 911, do you have an emergency? We're at Westside Walmart. There's an active shooter. Active shooter 911. Quite a few emergency vehicles going out the Lloyd Expressway there. We might want to look into that. This has to be so scary. We're getting all the help out there. A former Walmart employee, 25 year old Ronald Mosley II, had walked into the West Side store, entered the break room, and shot 28 year old Amber Cook. We have information the suspect's going to be in the back office area. We have employees locked in the office at the time. Uh, Officers arrived as singles and as partners. You want me? Yeah, I love you. Let's go. Okay, let's get in there. Among those flooding the scene, Jason and Crystal. Jason got there before Crystal and sprinted into the store through the grocery entrance. I grabbed a few folks right here, and then uh, we started moving uh, down the aisle uh, towards the east, towards, towards electronics. As Crystal sped toward the Walmart, she could tell by the radio traffic the suspect was moving east. I got out of uh, the car. Um, I positioned it here to cover these doors. Uh, this traffic inside was saying groceries, electronics, and that stuff, so I thought the east side of the building might be where it, something might occur. Crystal was already familiar with the layout of the store because she's a frequent shopper there. So she spun her squad car around to the side of the building and set up a perimeter outside the exit between hardware and automotive. Walked over here and two cars were available uh, to get covered on. Inside, Jason organized efforts to track down the shooter. For reference, that's Jason right there. In this shot, look closely at the figure a few aisles beyond the officers. That's the shooter. Now listen, this is Jason's voice. What does the stock room look like? You see the left? Crystal had a special reason for wanting to hear Jason's voice. And every time he spoke, I knew he was okay. You see, Jason and Crystal are more than fellow officers. They are husband and wife. Can you taste the cookie butter? Again. They met at Harwood Middle School, reconnected on the police force, and got married. Hello, how are you? They rarely work together unless it's off duty. That was the case on the night of the Walmart shooting. They were directing traffic after a concert at the Ford Center when the call came in. Do you speak with the officer when they get there? We have them arrived. Jason and Crystal dropped the barricades and went to their separate cars. Crystal knew Jason was inside the Walmart because what the stock room look like? She could hear him on the radio. He was last seen on the back. Firefighters are going in the front, and he, I don't know if he's contained yet. Jason had been told Crystal was at headquarters. Until it was all over, I didn't even know Crystal had went. I had butterflies. I mean, I wouldn't say you're never scared, but it, it's like you didn't have time. Jason entered the store through grocery. Crystal set up her perimeter outside this door between hardware and auto. Jason and his team moved generally south through the grocery, then generally east through pet supplies. Mosley was right there in electronics. From there, he opened fire on Jason's team. They took cover. Mosley ran to this door, opened it, met Crystal. They exchanged gunfire. Mosley comes back inside, runs up here. Right here is where the whole thing ends. Okay, we pick up the body camera video where we left off. That's the shooter slightly in the distance. The officers don't see him 
until he opens fire on them. At this point, Mosley tries to escape through the door Crystal is guarding. Outside, Crystal and Officer Trudy Day, seen here on Day's body cam, partly blocked by Day's jacket, had just guarded the transfer of Amber Cook toward the waiting ambulances. As we were making sure they were clear, this door um, flies open, the middle door flies open, and it's dark back there, no lights, but we could see a silhouette, and within a second or two, felt like to me, uh, shots were being, shots became fired at us. <laughs> Myself and Trudy, we ducked, and then we returned fire, and he turned around and went right back inside. That's where the nightmare ended. He went that way, the shots were from there. Right back there. Oh, look, I got hearts. It still looks better than mine. I know, it looks like actually one of those water lilies. Huh. One year later, Jason and Crystal are still processing what happened. I wanted to be there. I wanted to be where he was. Just but Jason had instructed that the next cars coming in should keep the perimeter. If I just would have been here two minutes early, I could have been in there with him. So that way I could have my eyes. That's why I was listening. I mean, I probably never listened so hard. <laughs> Jason is processing just how close his wife came to losing her life. He can come out this door. Hey! He didn't know until it was over that Crystal saw the muzzle flashes in her face. Whoa, 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 whoa. And felt the bullets whiz by. Immediately after the shock was relief, so I knew that she was safe. Uh, it's just, I know that's a hazard of the job, and I thought about it for a long time, and I thought about it, and we talked about it before she ever went to the police academy. It's, I don't like it, but again, I have, I have faith in her training and, and experience. And both of them are still processing the losses. Jason and Crystal say they pray for Ronald Mosley's mother often. And Amber Cook will live with her injuries the rest of her life. Still, it could have been much worse. Think about this. Between the first shot and the last shot, no one else got physically hurt or killed. Oh, man. That's a testament to Mr. and Mrs. Thomas my, uh, and the rest of their law enforcement family. <laughs> Now, the last we heard, Amber Cook was still getting treatment and improving. And I want to say that while the law enforcement response to the shooting was undoubtedly heroic, they always point to the heroic actions of Walmart employee Heather Moore, who protected Amber Cook after she was shot and helped get her out of the store and on the way to the hospital.